Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Supercharging Your Data Protection Without Compromise. This special webinar event is brought to you in partnership with Pure Storage and Commvault. Thank you so much for joining us on the webinar. Uh, we are excited to have you. We're thankful to have you. Uh, we've got a great event lined up for you today. We want this to be an educational event. And as such, I'll be talking about the Q&A uh, portion here in just a moment. But first, uh, I should let you know, my name is David Davis of Actual Tech Media, and I'm excited to be your moderator for today's webinar. Um, the questions box is on the left-hand side of your audience console. If you haven't found it already, I can call your attention to it now. And um, of course, we welcome all the good morning messages from across the United States and around the world, but we also encourage your technical questions related to how you, how you can improve your data protection and disaster recovery systems, uh, how you can improve performance and efficiency uh, of those systems. And we'll be doing a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the event. So keep those questions coming throughout the webinar as they, as they come into your head, just pop them there in the questions box. We also have a handout on the Pure Storage and Commvault joint solution. It's there in the handouts tab. Uh, it talks about the Pure Storage and Commvault high performance data protection and management solution, how these solutions work together to optimize your data protection infrastructure. So make sure that you download that. It won't be uh, as easily available after today's presentation. And then finally, we'll be announcing the winner of our Amazon $300 gift card at the end of the webinar. If you're watching this on demand, I'm sorry, the drawing has already occurred. The prize terms and conditions can be found in the handouts tab. And without further delay, I'm excited to introduce you to today's expert presenters. They are Mr. Jason Walker, Field Solutions Architect at Pure Storage, and Mr. Sean Smucker, Director of Product Management at Commvault. Jason and Sean, it's really great to have you on. I will first hand it off to you, Jason, take it away. Hey, thanks, David. Uh, thanks everybody for, for coming, We're super excited about uh, chatting about how, how we can supercharge your data protection without compromise. Being able to give your data protection some modernization but without compromising some of the things that that comes with. I am Jason Walker. I am a field solution architect uh, with Pure. I, I did, however, full disclosure, spend 10 whole years over at Commvault from 2005 to 15. Uh, before joining another data protection organization and then uh, over to Pure for the last couple of years where we've been driving um, more data protection use cases from the Pure standpoint, which we'll talk about how Pure got into that. Uh, and with, you know, with me, as, as David said, is the great Sean Smucker from Commvault. Sean. Uh, thank you, Jason. Thank you, David. And I agree with Jason. I'm really excited to be here and, and speak with everybody about this solution, about everything that, that we've been doing over the past couple of months. We're really excited about it. Uh, I've been with Commvault now for 13 years, and it's really exciting to be back with Jason because, oddly enough, Jason is the one that gave me my start at Commvault. I, I joined Commvault, worked with Jason when I first got here. So having this opportunity to, to be with Jason again and work with Jason again and talk about some uh, some really exciting things that we've done together and, and a, a really outstanding solution. What we think is a really outstanding solution. And um, yeah. I don't know, Jason. Yeah, I, can't what do you, what do you, I, I can't believe you disclosed that we were together, Sean. I can't, oh, can't yeah. believe you don't have to that. That's great. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, uh, we're dead, better together um, with a reference design. This is, uh, you know, we've been working together with Commvault for, for quite some time. Um, but you know, in, you know how some things, Sean, are better, are great individually uh, on their own, but then together they are, you know, am amazing. That's kind of how I felt about the relationship with Pure Storage and Commvault. Just two great tastes that taste great together, if I'm allowed to say that on that show. Uh, but, you know, it, it, when things are clicking right, you feel like you're way ahead of the pack. And that you're just free and easy, no care in the world. You know you're you're kicking it, and uh, that all that just kind of makes you smile, Sean. You know, you know what I mean. Uh, you have the things that you feel good about together, and it just you feel like you're way ahead of the pack, don't you? 
That's right. Every day feels like Christmas when, when you get everything working together and, and, and come up with something that's really outstanding. Hey, every day feels like Christmas. That's right. And that's how it's been, you know, for my two years at Pure working alongside Commvault. Uh, Commvault still such tremendous innovators, but I get asked a lot, you know, hey, why are Commvault and Pure you know, so successful together? What has been moving this, pushed it and, and you know, evolved into what we're what we've gone together uh, in, in this latest project. And the reason is, is pretty simple. And, and you'll you'll be hearing about it throughout the in, entire uh, show here. And that's you know, the two of us together give you unprecedented speed, uh, you know, speed and innovation of Commvault and the way that they have rethought writing data, the, the obvious speed of, of pure and specifically the flash blade as a, as a target for Commvault and the simplicity that brings to our mutual customers. And so those two are great together, Sean. But then we introduce the fact that you do this and you can do it at scale. And we'll talk about you know, the, scale, the scale of things together. That performance doesn't wane as you scale even further. Uh, it scales linearly. So speed and simplicity at scale uh, are what have been driving things. And really, it's been like a just like a, a train, just building speed over the last two years, Sean. And you know, it, it culminated in uh, well, not culminated, but the next step, next logical step was uh, doing a reference design together, you know, uh, right off the bat, boom, boom, a reference design here. It's just a, an exciting way to take the next step forward. Uh, absolutely. And when you talk about simplicity, the, the Commvault, so Commvault itself has, has always had simplicity as one of the, the true cornerstones of the solution. Being able to, to manage all of your data through the entire life cycle from, from one pane of glass, one framework, when you take that simplicity and marry it with the simplicity of, of pure, the scale and the speed of, of a pure flash blade solution, you have a, a, a really true end-to-end -end life cycle, simple life cycle management solution that, that's being achieved at, at, at a performance level that hasn't been seen before. Absolutely. So let's get into it a little bit, Sean. You know, there's, we'll break it down a little bit, what we're kind of seeing on there, you know, it, it involves a Commvault data control plane, as Sean was talking about. Uh, and then you have the data plane of the of the pure flash blade. And what the flash blade is a scale out fast file and object uh, target that can is really a multi hub. It's not a single use case. It's not a purpose uh, built backup appliance or anything like like you're used to. It, it can handle a multiple protocols. Uh, you know, SMB, NFS, and, and S3, a fast object uh, target can scale out linearly. You can grow incrementally through it all the way up. You know, we do, we do different uh, blades that you can grow all the way to 150 blades, really a, a very, you know, very performant target and, and has really changed, uh, changed the game in terms of data protection. You now, you know, a couple of years ago, and Sean, you, you may not know this, but the flash blade wasn't built as a as a backup target. It was built for highly parallel work workloads like machine learning, uh, AI, you know, analytics, that kind of thing. Uh, but funny thing happened along the way, Sean, in in our business, uh, folks started saying, "Hey, you know, we we need a more performant tier to restore from." The backup box has been checked and optimized forever, but we need to restore fast too. Rapid restore has become a stronger use case. And I remember the first customer that asked if we, you know, Flashblade could be targeted for such workload, Sean. And it was like, uh, well, sure, I guess all flash for a backup target. Uh, but the restore and the increasing RTOs, folks are walking in every day with new SLAs on, on recoveries and these old legacy appliances just can't keep up with it. So the data plane uh, has changed. And that's where Flashblade has has definitely stepped in. And and Sean, from a from you know a Commvault standpoint, uh, you know, this can be any and all workloads, can't it? That's true. And and not only what you said about Flashblade becoming a, a bigger part of the secondary storage solution, Commvault and Pure with with the Flashblade as that that secondary storage have worked together for a number of years. It, it's always been an integration point. 
what we did with this, this validated design is said, let's take a look at our individual strengths. Let's kind of peel those apart a little bit and look at a way to recombine them in a much better way. So we've always had this relationship with Gear. We've always been able to, to use the flash blade as that, that really fast secondary storage target for those low RPO, low RTO workloads. But is there a way that we can take all of this and do it better? Is there a way we can take what we're doing now and make it even faster, make it even easier? And that was, as you said, Jason, that was the, the inspiration behind the creation of this reference design. And when we take a look at the, that data control, the data control plane that we saw on the previous slide, this really speaks to Commvault's core capabilities of our, our indexing, the, the speed of our indexing, the breadth of our indexing, the ease of our indexing, and being able to manage these workloads, the cataloging, the reporting, and taking that and applying that into almost a, a service that operates on a, an appliance, an easy to deploy appliance. So you take Commvault's uh, expertise behind job management, data management, make it a service that deploys on a, an easy to install appliance. And then behind that you have, Jason, the flash blade, the storage layer, the really fast flash blade, and taking those capabilities of speed, uh, the speed of the, the backup and the data management, and addressing that in a different way. Yeah, and you know, Sean, we'll talk about it more on a later slide, but uh... You know, the, we, we, we have it on the slide here, blazingly fast native object storage. That has truly been disruptive uh, in the data protection space and being able to take advantage of that where, you know, our customers, you know, before Flashblade came around, data protection customers haven't, uh, haven't been able to do because of the nature of object storage here. But the data storage, the Flashblade being able to uh, want, really craves, so Flashblade craves uh, distribution and craves uh, a very uh, highly distributed workload, highly parallel workload. And uh, we'll definitely talk a little bit more about, about the marriage there, but the flash blade sitting behind the data control uh, of Commvault uh, was really great. And, you know, with, with workloads, you know, Sean, for me, I know I haven't been at Commvault in a little while, but uh, I remember the day that IntelliSnap, the ability to manage uh, hardware snapshots and integrate that into a, uh, a data lifecycle management. Uh, you know, the, the from birth to death of data, starting with the with being able to manage snapshots. I remember when we introduced that, and it was like this makes all the sense in the world. Commvault was was leading edge in that way back then, and today, Sean and Telesnap, it's you know, and, and with Pure, I've been able to kind of sit in and and really witness. Uh, the entire landscape of data protection. And everybody does things, you know, kind of well, and everybody's kind of like a me too. But for me, Sean, IntelliSnap is an industry leader and may not get all the all the hype it truly deserves. So let me hype it and throw it over to you to talk a little bit. Can you can you just tell the people about IntelliSnap? This because this is where this entire life cycle begins for me. Yeah, and you're right, Jason. When we introduced IntelliSnap, it was industry leading. Nobody had had really taken a look at doing snapshot management uh, through a data protection solution the way we did. And we have always led in the marketplace with this. We we have the broadest support of vendors, snap engines in the industry for IntelliSnap. And why IntelliSnap is different is you know, everybody's facing more and more data that they need to manage, but not all data is created equally or has the same value. Some data has a, a higher value and is more uh, critical to the organization. What IntelliSnap gives these gives you in this environment is a multi-level solution from near instant backups and recoveries all the way through to cold storage, leveraging these built-in snapshot technologies that People like Pure and, and the flash arrays have built into it. So now we can leverage those in an automated fashion. We can report on them. We can manage the, the, the life cycle of those. As you said, providing that, that short backup, short recovery, all the way through to offsite, even to, into the cold storage. Yeah, one thing I like about the IntelliSnap model and the Commvault model, really, but using IntelliSnap is that you can do snap management and have that quick RTO uh, it, let's even if you're, let's say, you know, I'm going to be biased here, Sean. I'm going to say, let's say you had VMware workloads on Flash Array, which is another uh, pure appliance and very low latency. That 
Commvault ties into that via API with IntelliSnap, it'll take, it'll manage just regular snapshots so you can revert back. But what I love about IntelliSnap is that you can choose the midnight snap and then you can mount that and then back it up directly using the, our reference design to the flash blade. That's, that's great. You don't even have to disrupt. It's not a separate job or policy. You can just integrate that into your life cycle. Isn't that right? It's, it's all part of your overall data protection policies and practices. Snapshots just yeah. become one of the many tools that's available for you to protect the workloads, regardless of what those workloads are. It's just a tool. And we integrate all of that with Pure into the, the overall solution, leveraging, uh, like you said, this, this reference design as the, the total solution for the data protection story. Yeah, it, so, it's great. So. Yeah, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, talk talk about the data say, control. Hey, let's, let's talk about that <laughs> data control plane. <laughs> so the data control plane in this solution, like I said, leverages the strengths of Commvault, the strength that has always been there at Commvault, the, the orchestration, the cataloging, the management of the data lifecycle solution. And in this reference design, what we've done is leveraged the Commvault RO1105 remote office appliance. Now it's called a remote office appliance, but it really is a multi-use appliance for a number of different use cases. And that's why we talk about it being a, a flexible option, whether it's a ComServe, whether it's a media agent or combination. But in this case, what we've done is we've taken those Commvault in indexing services and the deduplication and metadata management and installed that on an easy to deploy one new appliance that slots right into the environment becomes the orchestration layer for the entire solution and and, and what might that look like on a day one how does this play into the the overall design well typically you're going to have a disaster recovery center so of course we're talking about uh, two appliances, one in your primary, one in your secondary uh, data centers. And with those two appliances out of the box, uh, we're going to be able to manage up to 100 terabytes of pure flash blade storage in, in each data center. Now, again, this remote office appliance plays the role of the orchestration layer, that data control layer where we manage the indexing of what's happening in the environment, we manage the reporting of it, as well as the metadata of everything that's happening with the data movement between the components. Now, you can combine these in, in two in pools, again, using up to 100 uh, terabytes of pure flash blade on the back end, and you have flexibility for how you want to protect things like virtual machines. How am I gonna protect my, my virtual machines using the VSA agent? They can be run on these appliances or they can be run on uh, as a hot ad on the ESX servers. And of course we know all environments are gonna grow. Nothing stays static, we're always growing, we're always managing more data. So we have the day one experience with the, the appliances. How do we grow? How do we manage the growth within our environment? Well, on the pure side, that's very easy. You simply add more blades to these chassis. You simply grow the capacity by easily adding more blades to them. On the Commvault side for this, we add what's called data servers. And here again, these data servers are strictly metadata management. We'll talk a little bit in a couple, in, in a couple slides here about what that metadata looks like, but we can easily grow the environment by adding simple one U data servers, managing the metadata. These are uh, a little bit of SSD to, to manage the, that, that metadata, as well as being able to grow depending on how you're managing your virtual machine backups. The, the scale that we grow with, the right solution depends on our VSA approach. Now, obviously, again, primary data centers and DR data centers, so the best practice is always gonna be, let me add these in both data centers, and let's also add these in pairs, so I create some redundancy and some resiliency within the overall solution. It's amazing, and I know uh, when we dig into the details, why why did we why did we go with this reference? What what about the momentum that we've had together? What what did we learn? What did we really want to just lean into uh, from from that? And it's going to surprise some people, Sean. I know it because I know because when I talk to people uh, about our relationship and what the best practices around taking advantage of of the the industry leading Commvault uh, data protection software and and pure Flashblade. You know, 
it surprises them when when we tell them that what we really want to do is take advantage of fast object in the way that Commvault writes to object. And <laughs> because traditionally we talk about uh, object and the the history of on-prem uh, object is that it's not performant. It's super slow. Oh my gosh, try to recover from some of that. It is terrible. So when we start talking about it, there's an educational uh, process that takes place. It doesn't take long. Sean, I'm a, I'm a University of Florida graduate. Uh, I, can't, I can't think in deep contextual thoughts. So it's so simple, even a Gator can, can deliver this message. And, and the message is this, is that Commvault, uh, some time back, took a look at how they wrote to cloud libraries. And that's going to include a number of different things. But they decided they were going to create a different process to write object than they did with files. And I can remember, you know, I was with Commvault long enough ago to where it was who, And also that the way that Commvault innovated and wrote to disk, treating disk like disk, writing in chunks, was revolutionary. Everybody was using VTLs at the time. Commvault's the one that said, no, we're going to make things faster from a recovery standpoint, as well as backup by writing in chunks. And they did the same thing, in my opinion, with cloud and writing to object and doing this as well. And what, the, what it does, they create this, they use blobs and create a thread pool and it's shared a, across all streams. It's a, there's a dynamic TCP connections that spin up uh, automatically. It, it expands that thread pool as needed. And to improve throughput, if you can think about writing to the cloud, you would understand why you would want to take advantage of that. But uh, historically, Sean, on-premises object, this really didn't apply until Flashblade came along. Fast object. And being able to pour this data into a highly parallel. Remember, the Flashblade was created for highly parallelized workloads. Commvault writes to object in a highly paralyzed, highly distributed manner. It is an amazing relationship. And that's why I had the Reese's peanut butter cup at the front, because it is great. It it, it literally um, marries the two together. And, and that's why we say, don't object to object. And what you get when you do, when you do a combination with Commvault and Flashblade is that speed and simplicity at scale. Let me just tell you real quick, uh, is that you know when with Flashblade, all you have to do is create an object bucket. All you do is create a bucket. And then that bucket is configured from a Commvault perspective as a cloud library pointing to that bucket. It creates a single mount path. That path can be shared across any and all media agents that you want to participate in that. So what does that mean? That means to every customer that's trying to decide whether to do Windows media agents or Linux media agents or what have you, they don't have to make that choice anymore based on the protocol that they're writing to the back end. You could use either. There's freedom in that. There's simplicity in that. There's scale in that as well. Now, as it grows, like Sean said, we're not going backwards in growth. We're consistently growing. Things grow. As the data grows and is sent, that bucket expands automatically. So if you begin exponential type of growth, you don't, all you have to do is add blades non-disruptively adding blades to the flash blade, that bucket expands automatically. There's no uh, doctoral prescriptive thing that you need to do to take advantage of that. You don't, with other protocols, you have to start to balance performance to get that same performance. It could just con continually expand. So you get that simplicity from that standpoint. Now, from a Commvault standpoint, you know, you continue to add to the, to the reference design and you continue to grow that end and automatically grows the back end. There's, the scale to be able to grow into that. Uh, for, so that's why we say don't object to object from that standpoint. It creates a ton of connections. And Sean, I, I throw it back to you here. It also unlocks something that I call, you know, when, Sean obviously been there 13 years. I was there 10. There's There were always things that engineering put into that common technology engine, the common platform that was hidden for like, a, when did we have that? Well, they put it in two years ago that, that there's in there. To me, Cloud Accelerator is a huge secret, like an Easter egg hidden behind a tree that we can find and open it up and experience the goodness 
uh, to take advantage of it. So what what is Cloud Accelerator? And then I want Sean to talk about this too. Oh, sure. uh, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Hi, this is isn't this a secret? Isn't this a great thing to find? Be able to take well, advantage of. It is a great secret, and, and and I would I would position it as this, Jason. It's some of the some of the, the we created a technology here that up until now we weren't really fully able to exploit. I mean, the the storage accelerator, this cloud direct model, is a really powerful solution. But now with Pure, we have the the ability to really take this technology and push it to its full full potential. Well, when you think about Traditionally, the way data protection happened, Jason, it would obviously start at the client. It's got its its data. It's got its compression. Negotiates with the the Commvault media agent to determine what data is unique through deduplication. Then it sends that workload, streams that workload to the media agent, and the media agent would then stream it off to traditional storage. Now, as Jason, like you said, one of the the, the strengths of the FlashBlade technology is is the parallel the, the parallel data. Uh, throughput, the being able to take multiple streams of data. Well, taken with this, the storage accelerator capability that we developed, we said, that's handled data movement in a different way. How do we take advantage of, of FlashBlade's uh, performance? Well, let's just let all of the clients in the environment write directly to it. Let's move that media agent out of the, out of the data stream. Let's make that media agent, the data server that strictly manages metadata. And by metadata, I mean negotiating the deduplication, determining whether data blocks are unique or not. But then how can we push FlashBlade? How can we push the performance in the environment and get maximum performance out of this, this, this whole design? Well, we're gonna let these clients using this cloud accelerator, the storage accelerator, write in parallel, all of them in parallel to all of the available blades in the flash blade array. That way we take advantage of just that scale. The first thing we talked about is scale and performance, and this is how you do it. Everything writing at once to all of the available connections, those, those multiple TCP connections, those threads that you talked about earlier. This is how we get full performance out of the entire infrastructure. No bottlenecks, nothing setting in the data stream, just right direct to it. It's, it really is incredible. Now, the traditional architecture that we were just talking about is still fine. I mean, you can oh, definitely it's still do viable. that. Cloud, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but the, the cloud accelerator the, expands that out. Yeah. It's one of the many tools we have available to us. These are, uh, uh, you're right. All, all architectures available today are still viable or still supported. What we're doing is taking the specialties of both of our solutions and finding a brand new way of bringing that, that performance to the top of, of really uh, taking advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I've talked to a lot of Commvault customers over the last two years. And when I introduced the, the concept of a cloud accelerator, everybody is instantly intrigued. They can't believe it that this is a real thing. I'm like, yeah, Commvault's had this for a while. This is classic Commvault. Innovating, 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 uh, never, never settling, never sitting back, always pushing forward. And uh, now uh, folks can can take advantage of a very mature uh, part of the Commvault software with with Flashplay to be able to distribute that load even more. It, it sounds like we're making a big deal about it. It is a big deal uh, to maximize the effectiveness of, of the reference design uh, for sure. All right. So. A closer look. This is again. I'm a gator. I like I like seeing things in different types of um, you know uh, pictures and, and tables and like that. There's nothing wrong with using NFS, but as I think you've heard us talk about, like Cloud Accelerator is only S3 compatible, only object. So you have to take advantage of that. But the point was, as we were working on this together and we were validating the object fast object use cases it became really clear to us that, oh my gosh, the object has has same performance, but you don't have to be as intentional about the setup. You can really just grip it and rip it when it comes to the Commvault architecture combined with, with that fast object tier uh, to be able to do it. And the, you know, the only cons are that, Sean, you know, it's, it's kind of less familiar <laughs> to, to customers being able to take advantage of a fast object on premises uh, and they probably had some negative experiences before. 
Well, you're you're right. And and when the this S3, the, this interface for object store first came out, um, we weren't any nobody was really sure how can we embrace this, how can we make it work for us. So uh, some early forays into the technology might have produced some negative experiences, but like any technology, it continues to evolve. It continues to be refined. And there's no reason not to embrace these, th this newer approach to managing data, that's these newer interfaces that are available to us, whether that's you know, your on-prem or your off-prem, let's use them. Let's, let's really embrace these so that we can move our overall practices, our policies, our experiences in, in, in a, a more modern direction. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, Sean, as we started working together through the different use cases and, and validating performance on some of the key pieces to, uh, uh, you know, our customers' uh, data types and, and use cases, this is by no means what I have up here, a comprehensive list of things that, that benefit uh, from this. But these are some of the things that, that we tested and, and wanted to make sure early on with that. But I'm going to highlight a couple of these that we worked on with Commvault Engineering. Uh, and we're, we're really, I think we surprised Commvault Engineering. The live VM recovery, Sean, and the VMware live mount uh, use cases are highly, uh, they desire low lat lower latency, high performance type of, uh, of, of storage to be able to, to recover. And was surprised that the, you know, I think like I said, Combo was surprised that the fast object of Flash Blade met the thresholds to be able to support this from a Commvault standpoint. When you talk about spinning up a, a, a VM from storage and being able to run that off of that, you can understand how, um, you, how fast storage needs to be, right? Yeah, obviously VM, VM likes fast storage. Uh, VM, wants to be able to, to to create those machines quickly and, and provide access quickly and um, it was it was fascinating and really enlightening to see how quickly pure could with with Commvault spin up those live mounts spin up those those protected copies as as if they were live copies of the virtual machines yeah and, and you're right you know we as we take a look at this one of the last things that we'll We'll kind of focus on here. And we talked a lot about kind of the data flow going in, but the, the real power to this solution. I mean, it's a great solution just for ingest. It, and we've talked about we've we've hit it from every angle, Sean, ingest and, and fast backup and, and everything else. But really, we're saving the best for last here, Sean. The the restore capabilities uh, uh, of this or what really has been driving uh, the spike in, in demand over the last two years here. The ability with the flash blade to do highly parallel recoveries uh, as well. Sometimes uh, the reads off of the flash blade being up to three times faster than the already very fast writes means that restore, restore can be super fast. Now, we're not talking about a single email recovery or we're not talking about a, a single file recovery. What we're talking about is restore at scale. And this is this is so critical when you're talking about data protection. You're talking about, you know, disaster recovery. You're talking, you know, in, in the and you're talking about, you know, ransomware recovery. Being able to restore large amounts of data quickly is why Pure got sucked in to the data protection ball game to begin with, to be able to do it. So we just, you know, we pulled some some of our test data. That, that we did and and restores, obviously you see here, they're very, they're very fast. But the key part to this also is that it's not just fast recovery, which is awesome in and of itself. It's linearity, it's linear scale. It's as you grow, as we've talked about, as you add more, as you expand, like Sean was discussing earlier, the, the scale and performance goes with it. So, I mean, we have some numbers on here. These are our lab numbers, but what we wanted to illustrate was that linear scale to to that. And Sean, that, I mean, restoring at scale is what it's all about, right? Well, just restoring, protecting, as you and I have mentioned a couple of times already, none of our environments are getting smaller. We have more right. and more data 
to deal with every day. We're seeing exabyte scale coming just around the corner. The problem is we've got, there's still only 24 hours in a day. No matter how big our data centers get, <laughs> no matter how much data we need to manage, we got to do it in a fixed amount of time. And, and as you face situations where you need to get need to get back to operations in as short amount of time as possible because not doing so can cost millions of millions of dollars this is where you need the performance the backup performance the restore performance and the predictability and that, and that can't be understate or overstated enough knowing that as you grow the performance is going to grow with you because it, it, it doesn't do a, an environment justice just to say I've added more storage. Well, that's great. But if I'm going to add more storage, I have to be able to to address that storage and add performance along with it. And that's what the solution does here. Yeah, absolutely. Super, super excited. It, it, hopefully it's clear to see why you know uh, Pure and Commvault have taken the next step and doing reference design. It's not the last step. It, it, it is ongoing, and this is fruit from a growing tree uh, that if I could get poetic for a second there, Sean, be able to do that. And I know even after all of this, <laughs> you're going to you're going to want to say, hey, where can I find more information about all this? Where can I get some of the documentation? David, at the beginning of the of the telecast showed um, we had some some literature attached there, but you can find even more at our respective websites. On the Combo website, you can go to Partners and Technology uh, Partners and find the Pure Storage area where we have uh, you know, white papers for the reference design. Also, if you, you know, happen to be on the Pure website, the, the Commvault uh, uh, page on that as well has the same amount of resources. Uh, there's also a uh, fantastic best practice guide of which I pulled some of the data from for this presentation. Uh, as well. It absolutely dynamite things. And uh, you'll look at this and go, oh, these must be ex combo people up here. And you're right. That's the combination here, making the, the optimization, making the optimization work here uh, between the two. So um, that is, uh, you know, that's what we, that's what we have. I close, you know, say so you have an orange screen here, David, but uh, you know, Sean and I are, are kind of, uh, kind of spent ready for some questions if the, if you have any. Absolutely. Yeah. Great presentation. I love the energy, the excitement. It must be a very exciting solution here that we're talking about behind behind this. Uh, so now's the time to, a to ask some, some questions out there in the audience. If you have some, uh, now's the time to get them in. The first question that I wanted to ask you, and I'll just throw that throw this out to you know either one of you is, uh, who should we contact? If, if we're interested in this joint solution, do we talk to Pure? Do we talk to Commvault? What's the answer there? Yeah, I, the, the answer, David, is just like on the previous screen where I had the thing is either one, either one of us, Commvault and Pure. Uh, Sean, this is like a married solution, isn't it? Uh, exactly. The, the, this is a marriage of two great technologies, and we're dedicated to, to helping find the right solution for our customers, helping them to achieve the outcomes that they need. And so both of our, our companies, both of our sales organizations are completely on board with working with our, our customers to get to that, to those outcomes. Excellent. Excellent. All right. And then question here for you, Sean, I believe that is, um, will I need any special or additional licensing from the Commvault side to use this reference design? So, uh, yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, again, going back to the point of simplicity, how do we make this as simple to, to deploy and integrate as possible? There's really only two things we need is, is we need that control plane appliance, which is, which is a, a simple subscription, as well as standard data protection licensing. There's nothing special. The, the capabilities that Jason and I talked about here, the cloud direct storage accelerator, that's built right into Core Commvault. It works with all of the agents. It works in, in concert with the deduplication, the data movement. There's nothing special from a licensing or technology perspective that needs to be purchased from Commvault. Again, a control plane appliance and the, and the, the Commvault data protection licensing. Got it. Excellent. All right. Uh, let's see. I want to remind everyone else before you go uh, that we do have that handout there in the handouts tab on the high performance data protection and management solution. It talks about the speed, the simplicity and the cost 
optimization that this joint solution will provide. So make sure that you download that. Um, and then finally, Jason, Sean, any final words before we wrap it up? Yeah, you know, one of the one of the questions I, I get, Dave, a lot of time, and I and I see one that might have popped in, is uh, talking about what kind of protections do you have, what kind of security do you have around ransomware and a ransomware solution? And Sean, a combo. One of the things I say all the time is, man, check your software. The software has a lot of protections you probably aren't even aware of. And Commvault has a bunch around, around ransomware uh, as well, right? Well, I tell you what, Jason, we get on, we get on the, the topic of ransomware uh, and, and data validation <laughs> and immunity. We, we could do a whole nother hour. Um, That's true. There is, bet between the two solutions, just with Commvault, there are a number of layers, and I do mean layers, that we have built in the solution to ensure against ransomware, to ensure against data availability, data immutability, data validation. And when you combine that with some of the some of the technologies that Pure has, I mean, you really do yep. get a, a cradle to grave, client to spindle complete uh, story around protecting from uh, data vulnerabilities. Yeah, and then, yeah, that's so. A, come on. Yeah, we, well, I'll just uh, finish up. Yeah, David, the on that saying, you know, Commvault has a lot of its own efficiencies, and it's really all hands on deck when it comes to security and when it comes to, to ransomware. And then as, as you're writing these data sets down, uh, we do have uh, on the websites on there, a, a ransomware story, uh, you, leveraging after all the stuff, even with Commvault, you have your data on the FlashBlade. FlashBlade brings uh, a technology, again, built in, much like storage Excel, cloud accelerator, uh, called safe mode snapshots that can help you uh, further protect your data from there. There's a lot, and like I said, all hands on deck when it comes to, to ransomware. And Sean's absolutely right. We've done hour long webinars on that as well, uh, tackle, tackling that subject. Excellent. Yeah, that's a hot topic. I know every company out there is concerned about, and it sounds like this would be just the perfect solution to perform that kind of rapid recovery that they would need should they get you know infected with ransomware. So a really excellent solution right. here talking about how Pure Storage and Commvault have joined forces on this reference architecture. Um, excellent content, Jason, Sean, thank you so much for being on the event today. Thanks, David. David thank you. Yeah, this was, this was outstanding. Jason, great working with you again. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, always, always fun. <laughs> it is, it's, it's always fun. And thanks to everybody uh, who participated and, uh, and watching now and on demand as well. Awesome. And of course, thank you to Pure Storage and Commvault for supporting today's event. Before we go, I want to announce the winner of our Amazon $300 gift card. That's going to Clint Rankin from Oklahoma. Congratulations, Clint Rankin from Oklahoma. And again, check out the Pure Storage and Commvault respective web pages to learn more about this exciting new solution uh, from Pure Storage and Commvault. Thank you to Jason and Sean. Thank you to everyone out there in our audience for joining today's webinar. I hope that you learned a lot and have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.